Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Illustrator. Illustrator is Adobe software for creating vector-based artwork. So let's start a new file. File new. And here I can tell Illustrator what I'm creating. So am I creating for print or am I creating for web or an iPhone or whatever. I'm going to leave it as print. I can tell it how many artboards I want. That's how many pages I've got. Um, I'm going to leave it as one but I can add more and I'll show you how to add more um, once I've started creating it. Uh, the colour mode is CYMK. I'm just going to leave everything as it is. That's all fine. Let's just choose OK and I've got my page. OK, now let's draw and play around with some shapes. I've got the rectangle tool here, which draws rectangles, funnily enough. Uh, if I draw, drag, click and drag, it'll draw a rectangle. If I hold down shift, it'll force it to be a perfect square. So that's a convention that you'll find in a lot of software. So if you want to draw a perfect circle, hold down shift in the, on the ellipse tool. If you want to draw a perfect square, hold down shift in the rectangle tool. That's my square. That's the fill, that's the stroke or the outline of the shape. If I double click on this, I can change the colour. If I double click on the outline or the stroke, I can change the outline. You can't really tell because it's quite thin, but if I made it a bit thicker, you can see I've changed the outline. Let's draw another shape. Draw the same sort of thing. Let's fill this. Uh, make it cyan. And we'll change the outline to red. Well, this is a weird colour. That'll do. You've got your selection tool here for moving things around. You'll see that it, it creates guidelines to help you line things up. You can line things up using the align tool as well. So if I highlight both of those and click on align, I can say I want them aligned. And there it does it. You can uh, move them around, as I said. This tool will behave like your normal selection tool that you've used in other software. So you can uh, move things, resize things, rotate things. That's what you use the selection tool for. The direct selection tool is a new tool that you don't necessarily see in other software. That's for manipulating the different elements within the shape or the line or whatever. So if I click off I can move on these shapes and you'll see it highlights the path so I can drag and move that path or move it around or I can grab this different point and move it around. If I click on the anchor they will all move in. If it was a line for example, so if say I had a curved line that I drew before I can use the, the normal selection tool to move that line around and rotate that line. I, you can use the direct selection tool to click on the elements and go, well, I actually want to change that curve, make it a bit different. And that's how I do that. Now let's use the shape builder to combine shapes to make something a little bit more complicated. I'm just going to get rid of these things that I've created and set it back to default. And I'm going to draw a circle. So I go to the ellipse tool, hold down shift to make it a circle, and draw my circle. And I'll just make the stroke a little bit thicker. There we go. I need another circle that is going to be half the diameter of this one. So I'm going to click at the beginning, drag it till it's half the diameter. I'll just align those two circles. And I need a copy of this one. So I mentioned before how using Alt and Shift will make tools do different things. If I use the selection tool and drag something, it'll make um, it'll move it. If I hold down Alt and drag something, it'll make a copy of it, which is what I want in this particular case. So now I have two of the same circle. Again, if I'm uh, using keys to manipulate it, if I hold down Alt while I'm drawing the circle, it'll draw the circle from the center rather than from the top left hand corner how it normally does it. So I'll hold down Shift and Alt so I get a perfect circle here. And again, I'll use the selection tool with Alt held down to copy that to, um, that circle. So there's the elements of my yin yang. That's, this is, that's the shape I didn't mention I was going to make. I'm making a yin yang. So these are the elements that I need. I need to combine these to make my actual shape that I want. So I'm going to highlight everything, like so. Click on the Shape Builder tool. And what this tool does is it allows me to combine parts of that shape. To make them one object so rather than th these separate elements I can make them one thing so all I need to do is click and drag to combine those two elements together click and drag to combine those elements together and now that I've got this section here I can click on that click on a fill color I want it to be black oops sorry click on it and it'll do it and click on that one and it'll make it black all I have to do now is highlight the whole selection 
again and group it. Using uh, the shape builder, I have created a quite a complicated shape. Um, are you going? Now let's have a look at your various drawing tools. I'll just get rid of this yin yang that I've drawn. You have your pen tool, which you'll find in a lot of software. So Photoshop has a pen tool, and this one works pretty much exactly the same way. Click and click, you draw a straight line, click and drag, you draw a curved line. Hold down Alt, you can drag the little anchors around to change the light, way that the line curves if you want to do that. You have your shape drawing tools which I've already used for drawing circles and squares and so forth your line tool for drawing lines there's also an arc tool for drawing arcs, spirals and so forth different tools for doing different jobs you have your pencil tool which uh, draws any old line that you want once you've drawn the line you can add a brush to it so I can click on this click on a brush and it will create that brush effect to it and there's lots of brushes in there that you can play around with so we can do borders and do a frame effect to it. The brush tool, paintbrush tool, works pretty much the same as the pencil tool, except it already has the effect of, uh, added to it. So if I click on the a brush and paint, I'm already painting with that brush. So if, if I did the same thing with the pencil, it would be as a straight line until I applied that effect to it. You've got your blob brush tool which is for painting and you add to that as you paint so you add to it the shape so it's basically a line with an outline to it you can affect, use the brushes on it but it doesn't work as well in fact it doesn't work very well at all so I can click on that and click on this because it's got an outline it doesn't really work very well uh, you can play around with the, the blob brush if I double click on it I can get play around with the settings and change the shape of it um, and play around with that make it a bit of a, a ellipse shape rather than a circular shape. Okay, and then we'll start painting with that particular shape. And there are your drawing tools, or at least your main ones. Well, that's fine, but what do you do if you can't draw? Well, let's just get rid of all these random things that I've drawn. And we'll import a photo. So here's a photo of a leaf. This is a bitmap or a raster image. Bitmaps or raster images are made up of dots or pixels rather than lines and shapes. So if I zoom in on this, you'll begin to see how it's made up. It's made up of little squares. Illustrator works in vectors, which are lines and shapes. Um, I can turn this into a vector image by using the image trace function. So if I click on this, there's different settings I can have depending on how complicated I want. The high fidelity photo will do really quite a complicated photo. You can even do photos of people and it will convert it into a vector art and do a pretty good job of it. I'm going to just create a simple silhouette. So that's straight black and white. I can't do much with it until I expand it and I also need to ungroup it so I can choose different elements separately. And because I chose silhouette, if I click here and try and change the color of it, it will just um, change it into a grayscale. But if I go to colors and go to the color guide and pick something that's got a bit of color to it, uh, now I can start picking different colors. So I'll just pick a sort of leafy autumn color. There we go. So that is a way of creating a quite a complicated vector image without actually being able to do that yourself. I can use this to create a pattern. So if I go to object pattern make, just OK that. Um, it'll come up with a grid. I can play around with how big that pattern is. I'm just going to use it as is. I think I'll just make a copy of this leaf. Then make a gold of it, golden version of it. Okay. Maybe make it a bit smaller and rotate it. And you can see that it all influences the pattern. Once I'm happy with my pattern, I can click on Done, and then. It looks like it disappears, but now it's in my pat, uh, palette my, for swatches. So if I created a shape, I can fill it with that pattern that I just finished creating. Not a great pattern, but you get the idea. I mentioned before that Illustrator calls its pages artboards. How do we make a new artboard? It is this tool here. Click on that. I can click on New, this button here, and then just place my new artboard. I can jump between the two and add more as I need them. 
The last thing I'm going to show you is how layers work. Layers work a little bit differently in Illustrator than they do in a software like Photoshop because it's vector based. I'll just click on the little layers palette here. So it's got a all of these elements are on the one layer. I can turn it on and off so that you can't see it. I'll make a new layer and I'm going to draw another element. So I've got a new layer, I'm going to draw another cube. I can switch it on and off so you can see that's in its own layer. You can see this little expanding arrow here. If I click on this, you can see that there are actually sub-layers in this layer. So I can go to this object and drag it into a different layer by just dragging it. So now it's in that layer. And this object here, I've grouped. See, I've previously made that a group. And you'll see that that has got its own little sub-layer. I can even drag between that. So I can drag, I'll drag this red shape here. I'm going to drag it into that group. I won't do anything straight away, but the moment I click off it, now it's in that group, so it's going to behave as one object. So basically the main difference between uh, Illustrator and Photoshop is you have sub-layers within your layers and they're, they're automatically created. Every shape is in its own layer and if it, a shape is a group of objects, that group of objects will have their own layer as well as a subgroup. It's all hidden so that it doesn't confuse matters, but it's all there that you can, and you can manipulate those items like I did. I can um, even drag things out. So if I drag this green one out of the that group layer, it will behave as a group until I click off, and then I'll click and drag, and suddenly that's not in the group anymore. Anywho, that is layers in Illustrator, and that's the last thing I want to talk about in terms of Illustrator. I hope that gives you the basics of Illustrator. Have a go at creating something. It's really quite a cool piece of software.